Hey y'all, it is me, Crystal. Today we're going to be learning about my Dunna, my DNA, my genetics, my genealogy. What's going on in this shit? We're going to find out. So my birthday was recently, about a few days ago. I was about to say a week ago. Not a week ago. A few days ago. And my parents got me a 23andMe kit. It'll be cool. Sure to link me up with my dad because he did it. But you know, I got some extra jeans because my mom. So can't wait to find out what my shit looks like. Let's go. So first of all, the 23andMe kit, in case you haven't actually seen it before, comes like this. There was cellophane over it, but I took that off. When you open it up, you're actually going to find this little booklet here. It says, hi. Hi, how you doing? Greetings. And of course it has the kit itself. So I've already read this a little bit so I can see how it works. But ooh la la, what do we have here? A breakdown of the thing that you're going to spit into. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Okay, let's get started. Let's girl, let's go. Uh, no app, no worries. Follow these eight easy steps to get started. I won't use the app right now just for the sake of y'all being able to see what I'm doing. So let's go to the website. Is it just 23andMe.com? Okay, so we are now ready to go to 23andMe.com slash start. Let's get there. So we're going to go to 23andMe.com slash start. So register your kit. That is step one. So my first name is Crystal. My last name is Coleman. The more you know. I'm going to use the email I use for my business. So if any of y'all want to email me, there it is. Uh, verify your email. <sighs> Who's going to fucking sign up with an email that isn't theirs? Why do I have to verify this? Okay, enter your barcode. Let's enter my barcode. A down day. Oh, it's on the tube. So we're going to take this little thingy out. I'm like really excited about this. You don't even know. Uh, 23 and me. Opening it up. I really don't want to fuck this up. <gasps> There's a sleeve. Okay. So it wants the barcode off of this thing. The spit collector. So let me just enter that in real quick. I will be using this kit. I am a chick. Continue. Your kit is for the Ancestry plus Traits service. You will not receive health related reports, but you will be able to upgrade to receive health related reports. Honestly, don't know if I even want the health related reports. I'd rather that just be a surprise. If I'm expecting it, it's going to come a little bit sooner. You know what I mean? Universe vibes and bullshit. Oh, God, there's a lot of reading. What is this? Terms of service and privacy statement. When you sign up for 23andMe service, you agree to our terms of service. Click here to read our full terms of service. It's fine. Just make a clone of me. I don't care. Three important points you agree when using our service. Duh, they, of course they don't provide medical advice. Just because something's in your genes doesn't mean it's going to be, like, activated. You may learn information about yourself that you do not anticipate. You know what? We might find some siblings. We might find some random family. Maybe some cousins I didn't know about. It's going to be interesting. Describes what personal information we collect from you, how we use it and protect it, and your rights and choices. Please read, please read the full privacy statement here or scroll down to read the highlights. That's kind of cool that they decided to give us some highlights. <sighs> this is a lot. I'm going to read this on my own later. I will read highlights, but I'm not going to read a whole goddamn term of the service. Okay, I think I finally read all of the things. My only real fear with all this is that, like, somewhere in my body there's a cure for something awful and then the government takes me and no one ever sees me again. That's really my only fear. So complete registration and complete your profile. So I've officially been registered. It only took 10 fucking minutes, but I'm registered. So step two, no food or drink for 30 minutes. Don't eat, drink, chew gum, brush teeth, or smoke for 30 minutes before you give your saliva a sample. And don't remove the plastic film from the funnel lid. Do not stop or change any course of treatment or medication prior to collecting your spit. Fill to the line. So how much spit do we really need? 
Okay, we need this much spit. I don't know about you, but it seems like a lot of spit. Oh no, the bottom's right here. Oh, thank God. I was afraid I was gonna be sitting here spitting forever, you guys. I did not want to be spitting for that long. I don't even know if I can produce that much spit. I've been drinking a lot of water today because I thought I had to produce that much spit, but apparently I don't. <laughs> I just can't. That's why I'm gonna do this for you guys. I'm gonna spit into a fucking tube in front of you. So behold, I have filled it up to the spit line. There are bubbles up to here, but you want to fill it up to the spit line. My spit has a beautiful <laughs> lavender undertone. But huzzah, it is filled. Step four, close the funnel lid. Holding the tube upright, close the funnel lid as shown by firmly pushing on the lid until you hear a click. The liquid in the lid will be released into the tube to mix with the saliva. Make sure the lid is closed tightly. Okay. Hold on, I really want to make sure it's just spit. It is. Okay, we did it. I don't want to fuck this up. Like, I really want to know this. Okay. Snap, crack, pop. Genetics. Make sure it is closed firmly, tightly, securely. I don't know if I agree that this is secure, but it's fucking tight. Move on to step five. Screw on cap. Continue to hold the tube upright. Use the cap to seal the tube. Shake the tube for five seconds. Cap, where are you? Cap is still in this thing. So let's check this out. Screw on the cap. Okay. So we're going to unscrew this thing. That's upside down. So shake the tube for five seconds. We're going to do Mississippi's. Okay. Seal in bag. You're nearly done. Okay. So it has pictures. Thank goodness, because a lot of us are freaking dumb. We're sliding it, we're sliding it in the package. I am too. Okay. We gotta remove some kind of sticky. We remove the sticky. And we fold it over. We've got it. My spit is secure. Step seven ship it in the box. Okay. So, step seven, I'll be putting it in the box. It comes prepaid, so I don't have to bother going to the post office which I really appreciate. I think I'm in the post office. Yay! I'm excited. It takes about two to three weeks to get 23 me results, but I will go ahead and post this video as soon as I get my results, and we're gonna learn together. I'm gonna go ahead and download the app in the meantime. That way I can keep checking it. All right, it's time for a status update. It's been one week since she looked at me. Just kidding, since I spit into that tube. Um, I mailed it off the next day, which it was a Tuesday. It is now Monday, and it was just received. I think the reason it took so long to get there is because it had to be forwarded, which is kind of annoying because they give you the box with the shipping label already on it. So I'm like, don't even know your own address, or you just opened a new facility. What a time for me to send it off. Whatever, it's been a week. And I got an update that they received it. It came in a cute little notification. And there's also a video in the app that tells you, like, what's going on right now? What's up with my sample? And the video mentions that it actually takes the white blood cells and some shit from your cheeks and there's like tiny bits of that in your spit. Which made me think like, man, if I'd known that, I might have chewed on my cheek a little bit before I spit into that tube, you know, make sure it's really good and in there. So just a tip in case anyone wants to be weird about it. And what else did I learn? Oh. Keep in mind, processing times may vary, and it may take up until March 23rd to receive your results. It is February 17th today, so it might take, you know, quite a while. It is more than a hop, skip, and a jump away from being on my phone. So I'm looking forward to getting my results. I will keep you guys posted. Hey y'all, and welcome back. Guess what? I got my 23andMe results. Super, super stoked. I'll admit, I already looked at them. I recorded my initial reaction. 
However, I didn't know what I was looking at, so it's just slow. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just clicking on things. It's a hot mess. So I'm gonna give you guys a tour now that I actually know what I'm looking at. Let's dive in. Excuse my dog, he is trying to fight me right now. So, you log in, you click on Ancestry. This is the desktop version. I'm using my phone as a baby monitor. So you go to Ancestry and it immediately tells you your Ancestry composition. What you made up, girl, let's find out. So I am 64% British and Irish, Gavna. The Irish is rather small, so let's dive in further to the British and Irish. You basically get to dive into every part of your DNA to a reasonable extent. You don't get to find out where your soul comes from. Uh, so your DNA suggests that 64% of your ancestry is British and Irish. Yes, yes, exactly what it suggests. Muy bien. Uh, it tells me about the British Isles, how long they've been occupied, and then it'll give you a breakdown of like, where? What kind of British are we talking about here? Um, the United Kingdom. I think that's the only kind of British. I don't know. Not into geography. So number one is Greater London. Hella white. Like not even, I don't get to say crazy shit like get a mama caravan, you know, Brad Pitt, whatever the hell. Not even a fun British, just Greater London. Maybe I'll dive into London. Maybe I'll get into this because it's my heritage now. I'll start diving into these things, but overall I'm impressed. Maryside, what does that even mean? Glasgow City, heard of that. West Midlands, what have you. Parts of the United Kingdom. And obviously, the darker it is, the more likely it is that I am from there. It's the less likely that I'm from Ireland, but you know what? They think it just might be in there. So that's why that's in there. <clears throat> Diving further to French and German. So I am 8.1% French and German. Interesting. Never would have thought French. I don't know why. French never crossed my mind. German did. Um, France has 13 administrative regions. Oh, we're gonna learn more. It's a possible match. We're not we're not certain about France, but you know it's possible. Um, I guess it's mostly French. French and German is just one section because they're so close together. So I'm actually mostly just French, 8.1%. And Italian, 6.8%. That's the one I was looking for. I'm surprised it's so small. I thought my looks had a lot to do with being Italian, but apparently they probably have more to do with being British. Maybe even Irish. You know, Hosier's Irish. He too has brown hair and brown eyes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Boot-shaped Italian peninsula has been home to modern humans for over 3,000 years. <laughs> um, so, a specific part of Italy. For me, I guess it would be... Oh, girl, what does that say? Palermo? Oh, no. I can't read that. It's too far down there. But this one says Sicily and Abruzzo. I may be butchering that, but I've heard of Sicily. We've got that. A highly likely match for Malta as well. Ooh, which is a super tiny little thing. Look at just zooming in there. That's pretty cool. Specifically this little area. I know nothing of this little area. I will be diving into that little area later because I think that's interesting. So there you have it, my top three. Let's dive into the whole thing to find the most interesting thing to me. I mean, if you had to describe my DNA, my genealogy overall, um, you've got your whitest whites, and then a tiny, tiny bit of Native American, 4.5%. Why wouldn't that be true of most Americans now at this point? We've been here quite some time. We're all at least slightly Native American. Most. Not all. So yeah, it tells me about the first Americas, which part of um, the Native American map I would have been a part of. Sometimes it tells you their migration routes. There's a lot more to be learned off of 23andMe than I thought there would be. I thought it was just going to be you're this, this, that, and that, and there and about these areas. But no, we're getting a history lesson too, and I freaking love it because I love history. It is my favorite. Do I remember everything about history? No, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Never said I remembered it. So trace ancestry, we're talking itty bitty parts here. Um, Angolan and Congolese. But yeah, so that's what to be said about the ancestry. 
other cool things that I noticed about 23andMe that I didn't know it would do. So not only is it telling me where I came from, it's giving me some maps about who those people were and where they went. It's giving me a history of the area, making me have a real sense of self, at least my vessel. Yes, um, the ever fun Neanderthal ancestry. So my Neanderthal ancestry only counts for 4% of my DNA. It only plays into my height and nothing else. That's the only reason I have Neanderthal DNA variants is what they call them. Um, and it only affects my height. However, I am highly fucking offended by this Neanderthal <laughs> information. I have 294 Neanderthal variants. And that means that I have 79%, or well, I'm sorry, I have more Neanderthal variants than 79% of the 23andMe community. Damn near 80%. We're talking. <laughs> ah, the person with the highest Neanderthal variants only has 103 more than I do. My dad. He did his 23andMe. He only has 20, 225 variants. Thanks, Mom, for really upping that number. <laughs> I know, it's out of your control. Genetics, what are you going to do? So straight hair. My straight hair has nothing to do with the Neanderthal crap. Less likely to sneeze after eating dark chocolate. Didn't know that was even a thing that could be told through your genes. Less back hair. <laughs> I can't imagine them having less back hair. I thought that they'd be hairy as hell. I'd digress. Height. I have one Neanderthal variant associated with my height. So that is one of the interesting things I learned about 23andMe. They would... Moving on to the next thing, a maternal haplogroup. I cannot have a paternal haplogroup for I am a woman and I don't have a Y chromosome. Only men get paternal haplogroups. But the same is not true for men. They get both because they have X and Y chromosomes. But let's go ahead and view my maternal, hap maternal haplogroup. Um, so, this is not a thing that I knew existed. So my maternal haplogroup is H1C1. It is technically a person, but they are not given names. They're given these little numbers and letters. So as our ancestors vich, virch, oh my god, let me start out. As our ancestors ventured out of Eastern Africa, they branched off into diverse groups that crossed and recrossed the globe over tens of thousands of years. Some of their migrations can be traced through haplogroups, families of lineages that descended from a common ancestor. Your maternal haplogroup can reveal the path followed by the women of your maternal line. We can all be traced back to just like one group of bitches. What? So if you're in haplogroup L, Every person living today could trace his or her lineal line back over thousands of generations. All of our lines would meet at a single woman who lived in Eastern Africa between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago. Though she was one of perhaps thousands of women alive at the time, only the diverse branches of her haplogroup have survived today. The story of your maternal line begins with her. Haplogroup, oh, you got one bitch. You don't even have a group of bitches, you got one bitch. And her DNA just went, ran rampant. That's a boss bitch. Like, wow. And she don't even know it. Uh, haplogroup L3, there's a story for you. Her da 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 Let's go to mine. You guys get the idea of eternal haplogroups now. Um, H1C1 is frequent among the 23andMe customers, but we don't know jack shit about it, is essentially what they're about to tell me. So I'm going to stay tuned to see what they learn as more of us show up. What's up, my H1C1's brothers and sisters? Can't wait to learn more about our bitch. Okay, so I think the last really cool thing that I know of at this time, having gone through my results for the last three days, is that you can compare your DNA to others. So let's see how I can compare to my dad. I don't remember how to do that, so give me a second. All right, so I was looking for my dad's. Found it. We're going to connect. We're going to compare, okay? We're going to find out how they compare next to each other. So, I uh, am 94% European, he is 86.7, so my mom put a little more European up in there. Um, East Asian and Native American, my dad got 6.5, I got 4.6. I feel like that means that might all be for my dad. It's West Asian and North African, interesting. Broadly Northern West Asian, Northern West Asian, it's just giving me areas. Sub- Saharan African 0.5 and this is something that doesn't actually show up in mine 
Maybe you have to dig further, but it shows up when it compares the two of us, which is interesting. Um, it has our maternal haplogroup. So my dad actually had a different maternal haplogroup. It's H3, and this one actually has a paternal haplogroup for me. Oh, never mind. I just realized why. It's just friggin' him. It's his. Duh. Because we're connected now. It compares our Neanderthal ancestry. That's the first place I saw it. I was like, what the hell? Uh, you and Daniel have relatives in common. Who'd have thought? So overall, my review of 23andMe, I think it's really cool. If you're into history, if you're into genealogy, if you want to meet some relatives, I think it's a great thing to do. Even if you're just bored, do it. Uh, I think it's worth it even just for the entertainment alone. It's almost like a pretty cool entertainment experience can also help you identify like who you are as a person. If you like don't know who you are, I bet this would be a good place to start. You can like start attaching some parts of your personality to these places and find out what these places are about and you can slowly become about those things. It can be just part of who you are. And other reasons to do it, find out your Neanderthal ancestry. It's a random fact. See if you have more than me. Good luck. So yeah, go and do it. It was lots of fun for me.